There's an NBA street in here and it's volume three. Of course, the latest model and most collectible of the NBA streets. In fact, the GameCube version even saw some Mario action in on it. So yeah, this one's desirable, even disc only. This is another one that I hope is gonna push us into the zone. What's up everybody, MC Murr here. You know, we're up here spending the weekend in Ella J, Georgia, and it's just so scenic. And you know, though it's scenic, my mind is far from not thinking about video games. And I'm thinking, you know, with all this beauty around us, what better time to talk about recent pickups? You know, if you watch the show, we've recently embarked on a new quest a resurfacing games quest. How much money can we make doing this again? It's been my bread and butter for so long. So we started back to it with only a $25 bankroll left over from seasons ago. And we've already turned that into $45 as of the last episode, where everything didn't go as planned, but where we still did squeeze a little oil out of the old olive. Everything worked out okay. So we've got ourselves another lot, just like I said we were gonna do. Uh, we're in this lot probably around $22 and some change, which isn't bad at all. There is some PS1 stuff in here, and uh, one game that did catch my eye, of course these are all loose, is a copy of Legacy of Cain Blood Omen. And I gotta tell you, this game, even loose, is still bringing upwards of 15 bucks. This could be the better part of what we spent for this lot if this game works. Got a lot of racing games in here too that probably aren't worth much. I mean, there is a Need for Speed game, Need for Speed V Rally. And from what I understand, this one's not worth much. And I don't know how much fun it even is. I mean, the PS1 graphics on really any genre just have not aged well, but. There's an EA NASCAR game here, but those, you know, were annual at one point, which pretty much makes them sports games at that point you know and there's no shortage of sports games here and you just can't really count those in with the lot you know if you're getting 30 for 30 or whatever it is but 20 of them are sports games well then you really only got 10 for 30. you have to weigh those you know odds before going in on a lot like this but though there's a lot of it in here there's there's quality in here too so it, it just made sense and you know what we do with the sports games is we lot those together we set them to the side we don't sell them with each lot we get a kitty going a, a pile you know a community pile there of just nothing but sports games and eventually you sell them off again if you watch the show you know i did that recently 200 discs that I had no money in, all from lots just like this that I had already made my profit on. And with the money that we made on that, we bought the Pandora arcade stick, had practically no money in that, thanks to a bunch of trash sports discs. So that's what we do with these. But you know, there's sports games and then there's, you know, those instances where you've got sports games that are actually worth something. There's an NBA street in here and it's volume three. Of course, the latest model and most collectible of the NBA streets. In fact, the GameCube version even saw some Mario action in on it. So yeah, this one's desirable, even disc only. This is another one that I hope is gonna push us into the zone. Then we come to the 360 games. And man, there's some decent ones in here. Nothing that's, you know, mind blowing, but we got some decent ones. And you know, probably the uh, most notable is the Halo Anniversary copy that's in here. No idea what this is going for right now. All I know is Master Chief Collection stays expensive. So here's this that by itself might fetch a decent price. Certainly better than a lot of the dollar discs we end up with in piles. This was a great remaster and it was very expensive, you know, in its heyday. Now the question is how much of this works? And if it doesn't, how much of it can I get working? I mean, this is an untested lot, so we may get lucky in a few instances and not even have to do repairs. We may get unlucky in a few instances, do repairs, and actually have discs that will no longer speak to us. But as always, I'm optimistic and I'm hoping for the best. This week, I'm resurfacing these discs, testing them, and getting them listed for sale. And well, hopefully they'll sell quick. In the next episode, you'll get an update on how these did, and I'm sure we're going to be in the green again, and moving on to purchasing our next lot. And you know me, I can't take a week off from picking, 
anytime I go to a new area, you know, even if there's a, even if there's not a lot to be seen, I gotta dip in where I can dip in and see what I can get. I popped into this consignment shop I saw from the road and found this Jack Pacific Retro Arcade Space Invaders unit. And if you watch the show, you know I'm a sucker for these old plug and plays. You know, they're not on the shelves anymore. These are, you know, these are, these are old. This one's about 10 years old. It's got a decent playlist on here. I mean, so to speak. I mean, the fact that Legend of Kage is on it really got to me, but you know I like to look at these things with you on the show, and I love to live stream these things. I mean, while they're not HD, the AV is easily upscaled for streaming, and you know, it'd just be cool to take a look at. Let me know in the comment section if you would like to take a live look, tour, if you will, of what is on this unit. They were asking eight for this, which honestly, I mean, it probably wasn't bad, but the internet's so spotty up here. Couldn't really check numbers, so. I just asked what the bottom dollar was. Hi. Hi. What's your best price on this thing? Oh, where, where did you get this on? Yeah, I found it in the hole back there. About, it's got eight dollars on it, about six. Six bucks isn't bad. Yeah, you know, I definitely was gonna take the risk. And it really it really wasn't one. These are worth on a good day right around thirty bucks sealed like this, even though the package isn't perfect, so was very happy to find that. There were some games too, you know. They had a copy of Game Party 3 for the Wii sitting there, and that's about as exciting as having your toenails removed with a set of vice grips, but it's complete. And you know, not being able to check prices in there, I'm like, I don't know, but I mean, look at what Wii Sports is doing nowadays. So, you know, we'll take a shot on this. It was three bucks, maybe I could get it for less, I thought. So it's got a little bit of a gouge in it, but I'll take a chance on it. Would you do two bucks on it? It's Mark 3. So we'll call it eight for the pile. So yeah, two dollars, not bad. We'll take it for that. It's it's in decent shape, and this is a fifteen dollar game right now on a good day. You never would have got that for this back then. You know, just just here recently, you wouldn't have. I mean, it's I don't know. People being stuck at home is it's done crazy things to pricing. Then I wander into the local Walmart for some supplies, and you got to check their bargain area, right? It's a sealed Wii U game. I wasn't going to leave this there. Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE. This is one that I wanted. I mean, these types of RPGs tend to be a dime a dozen sometimes. You know, I've played Fairy Fencer F, Omega Quintet. They're all similar looking kinds of games. This one kind of does its own thing. And I just never got around to picking it up. I know it's on Switch now. And I also know that 15 is about retail for this. A pre-owned copy can be upwards of 20 bucks, but here it was sealed. You know, just ready to grab, instant gratification, 15 bucks, you know, I'm worth it. I decided to pick this up too. It, it looks like something I want to experience finally. So that's it, you know, we're making money at home, we're making money abroad, we're doing our thing, we're having a good time doing it. You know, we're looking at interesting games and we're having fun discussing them too. And that's just fantastic stuff. So glad to have you in on it. I hope that you liked this episode. Hope you're going to drop a like on this episode. Most importantly, if you have not already done so, I hope that you're going to subscribe to the MC Mer Show and be a part of our nation as we're rising up all the fantastic things we do right here on the show. You need to be a part of it. Make sure that you smack that notification bell so you're always supposed to know when new content goes live because you know that I love making it for you. So many fantastic things going on right here. And I've got to share each and every one of these things with you. Making some cash. We're bumping things up. It's going to be interesting to see where we are on the numbers by the end of the season. MC Murr signing off for this fantabulous episode, and I will see each and every one of you again next time.